Hey everybody, it's Mr. Woodward. In this video, I'm introducing the rubber band car project. So you'll notice here I've got three uh, student examples of rubber band cars that have been built in the past. Um, some of them did much better than others. Uh, this one is old enough that the rubber band is actually now broken in half, but I'm just showing these as examples of what I mean by a rubber band powered car. And the idea is that every rubber band can store a certain amount of energy. That energy is called elastic potential energy. Okay? The amount of elastic potential energy that a rubber band can store is related to two things. The first thing is how much you stretch the rubber band. The second thing is how difficult it is to stretch the rubber band. And we would measure that by the force required to stretch the rubber band. So a thin rubber band like this is relatively easy to stretch, but a much thicker rubber band would require more force to stretch it. So once you understand the stretch length and the force required to stretch the rubber band, you can actually measure the amount of elastic potential energy stored in that rubber band. And the idea is to transform the elastic potential energy from the stretched rubber band into kinetic energy that would make the car move forward. And the goal in this project is to use the stored energy in a rubber band to actually transport a cell phone a certain distance. So how does that generally work? Well, in this car, this student has on the rear axle a paper clip that they've glued to the axle. Okay, and the idea is that if you take this rubber band and you loop it around this paperclip mechanism, then you can wind up the rubber bands. And as this rubber band winds up, it begins to stretch the rubber bands. Once I've got a stretched rubber band, if I were to turn the car upside down and release it, then that rubber band would want to unstretch and it would turn the axle and would cause the wheels to spin. Now, these cars um, all use that similar mechanism of essentially a wind-up car from a stretched rubber band, but they do it in different ways. This car uses a box for the structure. This car uses tongue depressors for the structure. This car uses just a flat piece of cardboard for the structure. One commonality is that they're all using CDs as wheels, a nice recycled material that you may have at your house, but you can use other stuff for the wheels. And I'll just show you some of the creative ways that they attached the wheels to the axle. So this person used sponges, this person used bottle caps, and this person used some sort of bottle cap as well to go from the hole that's in the middle of the CD to these skewers, which they're using as axles. Okay, a big part of this project is going to be the engineering design process. So you're going to create a design you're going to release the car and it's going to go like half a meter and you're going to have to figure out why isn't this going very far? What's stopping it from moving? So one common um, error is not eliminating friction in your car. So really look for the ways in which friction is slowing down your car as it tries to move and transport that cell phone. Okay. Another hint I'll give you is that this system here of winding up the rubber band around the axle and then getting that car to move forward is hugely important to get right. So pay attention to your wind-up mechanism and make sure that the car can get enough momentum forward once that rubber band is released. All right, I hope you enjoy the rubber band powered car project.